Welcome to day 36. And today is what is in a move. So we're just going to start breaking down little pieces of the Tai Chi set and explore what a macro movement is and what a micro movement is and how as you gain experience with movement and understand the movement better, how you able to go from those big movements down to the little movements, but then bring yourself back again to the big movements. And that's where it becomes meditation in motion. And uh, so that's what we're going to explore today. So while we wait for everybody else to find us, um, let's go to uh, the seated set. And I'm going to do part one and part two. Um, and we'll just play a little bit with some of the concepts that come from there. All right. Hey, Mama Bear. Good to see you. I take it that that means Papa Bear is there too. So happy. I know you guys didn't have a chance to get on the last couple days. That's wonderful. And Jeanette, good to see you. So I was just explaining we're going to do macro movements and micro movements today. And then how you get back to the macro movements at the end. And how you can explore the depths of your Tai Chi. So I have my you're the rat t-shirt on today compliments of one country tai chi for sharing their logo with us and i'm wearing my tai chi cape breton shirt and uh shout out to all of my students i am missing you i can hardly wait to get back into a classroom somewhere and see people and be able to reflect but in the meantime let's go so we're gonna do seated set Part one and part two as our warm warm up as a chance for us to get the flow of energy happening and then we're going to go from there and um, yeah let's do it so there goes the bow okay things are snapping and crackling already that's a good sign okay commencement nice big breath in let that go sink Got to close the blinds, Dad. <laughs> okay, here comes reaching out. The sun is shining on me and it feels really good. Left graspers take comes back. Hold the ball here. Bow and arrow back. Palm to palm. This guy I got my handy dandy blind mover. He's got everything organized on one side. Okay, here goes around, whip to one side, goes across in front of Lower Dun Tien, and out. Step up to raise hands, hand is going to come out, down, and push out. <laughs> Wonder what other props can appear. <laughs> comes around, thank you, and then brush knee. Uh, half a step, there goes out, strong paper, open the hands, brush knee, first step, brush knee, first step, brush knee left, half a step, strong paper, open the hands, Come in, out, wipe the sleeve, and then go through, out. Bring it back, two hands, open the hands, coming around, sink, lift, and this is going to expand. So here we go into part two of the set. Brush knee, bow and arrow back. Opening the hands, two hands out. This is going to come across, whip out diagonal. This is coming up, sink. Spirals around, push out. Fist goes underneath the elbow, opening the palm, lift. Sink, lift, sink. Sink, there 
there's a word up monkey. It's going to come around. Lift up to raise hands. Rise. Pause. Falling down into back. White stork spreads wings. That's going to come all the way around. And push up. Half a step. Push needle to C bottom. It's going to come down. Push into the feet. That's going to come back. And reach out. Fan penetrates back. Flowers, what fairy and punch, and reach out. There's the ball, grass birds tail. Today I'm going to leave my hands out in the field like I did yesterday. You know, we talked about different positions you can use with the hands. That's what I'll put them today. So it's going to come around, whip to one side, and reach out. Move hands like clouds. Everything up, hands through. Going across. Group number three. Four. Group number five. This is going to reach out. Horse is going to come up, wings back, reach out that left hand, turn, do a heel kick, brush knee, and brush knee. Uh huh. And there I did it again. I, this is my like my pitfall for this is which hand. So one extra brush knee in there, sorry about that. Out, turns, chop with fist, white sleeve, hold the flowers, and deflect fairy punch. Sink back. Kick. Comes all the way around. Strike. Kick. Kick. Hold the flowers. Wings out. White sleeve. hands and then sink. Crossing over, open, and then lift back up. So there is part one and part two of the seated form. Let's put the bow on the end so we've got gratitude in there. And then let that go. Okay. Beautiful. See Charlotte's in there too. <laughs> so it's kind of a crazy thing because I can see some of the names come up on the side, but then when I go back and I check to see who was there, I know that Robin had appeared from New York. I know I sometimes have uh, Rhonda in from uh, Red Deer. Sometimes I have Russ coming in from the States, but it doesn't appear on my list. So anyway, I just know that when I get to go back at the end and see, I'm always so happy to see the names. So it feels like you're here with me. It's a little bit of conversation. Okay. What I noticed is if I keep that saber set in when I'm practicing every day, my shoulder is feeling so much better. Um, so I did that the last couple of days and definitely 
everything starts to work a little bit better. So as we work through macro movements, micro movements, I'll add that in there. I saw the thumb go up. <laughs> Someone else likes to savor as much as I do. Okay, so let's work with, um, let's work with from part one, just try to break down. So if we have new people that are going to be watching, you can the macro movement's going to feel like, and then I'm going to just start to narrow it down. Lots of this I've talked about over the last few weeks. I'm just trying to put the information together in a different way. And we have a lot more subscribers to the YouTube channel, checking them out. We also have a lot of people that are sharing the videos out. And so they're starting to ripple around. And so I just want to make sure I get everybody. Okay, so if we go from part one, let's go from the very, very beginning. Okay, and I'm just going to turn the camera up a little bit. So you're not just looking at half my head cut off there. Okay. So commencement. So from a structural perspective, you're going to see the foot, and the feet are shoulder width apart, and you're going to see hands rise. So from a structural perspective, if you're going to be learning Tai Chi, then that's what you're going to see. Okay, so you're going to see me lift the hands up and put the hands back down. And then you may see me look like a ballerina because I have done ballet and so my hands flow. So you might take your hands up and you might take your hands down. So that would be macro movements, big movements. But we can take that and we can go concentrate it. We can take it in and, and discover it more deeply. So the first discovery I want you to focus on is your feet. What is the awareness in your feet? I was just working on a presentation about nutrition and I was working on reflecting on what the feet feel like when you stand on them, when you're just being you and you haven't done any Tai Chi yet. What happens? Do you feel more pressure on the big toe rather than the little toe? Do you have all your the heel? Do you have no feeling in your toes at all? All of those pieces are telling you about which systems are not energized. They're not supported. And I was thinking today from the perspective of nutrition, what nutritional elements are you missing that puts you in that position? In Tai Chi, we can move it and we can get rid of it. We can have the flow happening. But you have very uh, initial awareness. Where do you have your energy? If there is a push going into the big toe and the big ball joint and you're stressing and you're rolling in your ankles, you have muscles that aren't working for you the way you want them to. And how can you instigate taking care of yourself so that it automatically goes there? So that's one way of thinking about it. <laughs> that's where I'm going for my presentation on Friday. But for today, Where's your awareness in your feet? And now let's add some micro movements to it and see if we can shift it, okay? So you've got your awareness. You know which parts aren't feeling quite, you can't feel all your toes touching the floor. For me, it's the right big ball is not really sitting correctly. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push down into my feet with just a little bit of pressure, not really hard just very gently, and as I push into my feet, I'm gonna see if I can let the stress go so that my arms feel like they can float. And then when they get up towards my shoulders, my elbows have already released, I'm gonna see if I can have my knees release when my elbows release, and that comes back down. Okay, so if you push into the feet, the hands float, elbows release, knees release, everything goes back down. Oh, <laughs> now my back lets go. Okay, so breathe in, breathe out. Now usually I don't talk about breath, but I just thought I'd better remind you, keep breathing. And then let that go, and just blow that right out. And breathe in, and breathe out. Okay, so now if you were watching, before you saw structure, you saw my shoulders move. But now 
You see the shoulders move, but now there's more movement that's coming through the arms. And I talked about how my knees were related to my elbows. So there is a relationship between the joints and they're trying to communicate to each other. Uh, today, as I was researching meridians, usually I talk about the 14 that we trace, but there's actually a series of meridians that's not usually identified, which are tendon muscle meridians. And I have talked about the tendons related to the spine and how we can release emotion through that. But there's also this relationship that comes through all of our joints and it comes through this, this energy cycle. And uh, so when you start to engage the elbow, you engage the knee. And now you have a change in that. When you change, excuse me, when you engage the wrist, there's an engagement that comes through the ankle. And then of course, there's this jaw. The jaw related to the hip. So as all of these joints start to release and open, we have the potential now to change what's happening in the joints. Okay, so I'm hoping I brought you a little bit further with the micro movements. Why is it important to engage those joints? Because there is a frequency. The space in the joint is an empty space. Structurally, it appears as empty space, but it's actually where frequency sits. So that's where there's a vibration between the bones. And as we open and engage this, we change the frequency. And that changes your energy, changes the health of everything through the tissue. And it's coming through that tendon muscle meridian system. It's pretty sweet. Okay, so there we have the micro movements. Okay, so now I'm going to take you even smaller. We've come through the big joints. Let's go into lower dantian. Let's go into how does this part here below the belly button expand energetically and then contract energetically, not structurally. So again, we're micro movements because we're going to be inside organ, fascia, all those pieces, they're going to be working. So this time, when you take that breath in, notice how the spine changes. Notice where the tailbone drops. Notice how the opening comes through the bones in the spine. And that helps us to kind of get a sense for what's happening in lower than 10. And let that go. Sweet. Okay, now we've done a whole bunch of these. But I hope the experience is much more in depth than you started with. Okay, now what I started to notice is up here at the base of the skull was starting to let go. I did a lot of time at the computer today. And up through the neck, that's starting to move around a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and go into the spine and lengthen the spine and lengthen up the neck at the same time, all with the same movement. So now we're going micro movements through the spine. Okay, so you've got breathe in. Notice the lift to the top of the head. Tailbone is going to sink, drop, lengthening through the spine, out through the top of the head. And then all of a sudden your arms feel longer. <laughs> Take a deep breath in. Let that go. Sink. And one more. Take a deep breath in. And then sink. Okay. That is how you can begin to work into the depth of Tai Chi. Uh, I released some of the videos on the YouTube channel today that were left over from the whole filming sequence that Debbie Vaughn and I did in the fall. I had a few videos I was going to release once a week, but now that we're all home, I felt it was more important to have all the videos. But one of them is how to choose an instructor and making sure you are working with someone who can help you with all those pieces. I can do some things on the video, but it's also important to be in a room with people to be able to 
do Tai Chi with people and have somebody who's looking at your Tai Chi, which would be the same for me. I don't very often have people who get to look at what I'm doing and tell me how to adjust things. So that's really also very important. Okay, so that video is there. So I just wanted you to know that. Okay, so you have that piece happening. Let's go over to the low cup set and the opening of low cup because we do it with the palms up. And we have talked about over the last few weeks the difference between the palms down and the palms up and how when you change the tissue in those two positions, you can change the hip, you can change how the whole system is communicating and low cup starts with the palm up. So the commencement for it is different. So your palms are gonna go up and out and you notice the tailbone is gonna go backwards while your hands go up. That's a little bit different than Tai Chi. Then, just as you get to the end, you kind of get to the end of your hands and the end of your tailbone, it comes back. And you go up through the top of the head, trying to leave that spine long. Okay, we go to the macro movement. Macro movement, somebody brand new to Tai Chi is going to see. I moved my hands up. They went to kind of across from my eyes. I turned the palms over and I brought them back down. That would be macro. All right, and then the next piece would be hook into the feet, feel the connection with the feet, notice what the feet are doing. Oh, all of a sudden the tailbone's gonna let go. And turn the hands, come back, and let the head come up. Okay, so that's a little bit more micro movement. Let's take it further. So now don't forget your breath. So breath in, notice the tailbone, let everything go. And then let the come back in and sink back. So now that's going up through the top of the head and lengthening. So it's an opposite kind of movement to what we did in Tai Chi. So it's doing something a little bit different. So now we're going to go deeper. Now we're going to go again into that lower Dantian and we're going to see where the expansion contraction is of that. So your hands go up, tailbone drops. So that's going to be an expansion of lower Dantian. And then when you turn your hands over, it's going to be a contraction of lower dantian. And that is a micro movement that you need to make sure you get to as you're working through all of the pieces. Expand. Sink. Usually we don't think about doing that opening that way, but it does give us the chance to do the micro movements for that part. Okay, okay. All right, so I'm just seeing what's happening there. It looks like Jeanette had to come back on. Okay, that takes us to one little part. Let's expand that. So let's go to Grassbird's Tail because this one, we have the start of the toyu in it, but we also have what we're doing with hands and things. So I'm going to turn sideways. You've got your 45 with your left foot, and you're going to sink on the left, place the right foot, and you're not going to shift your weight. You're just going to place your foot. For people just learning Tai Chi, that would be the macro movement. Oh, the foot goes out. And then I'm going to change from this back foot. I'm going to turn to the front foot, and then I'm going to go back to the back foot. Okay? So from a macro movement perspective, I move from here, I go to here, I go back. Okay. A lot of people will see that, I'm just going to use a regular toy in your hands for a moment. The hands go out, the hands cross, and it looks like I've turned my body right to the side, and then I've gone back out. That would be the macro movement. And that would be someone new trying to figure this move out. Okay, so now I'm going to take it deeper. So I'm going to introduce the ideas we talked about, which is you're going to take 70% weight from here. There's 30% in the front. You're going to push that weight through the body and then down to the foot. And the key piece about Tai Chi is when we move 
weight over, we're spiraling down into the tissue. So we spiral into the right leg, it's going to spiral back out, down into the left leg. Spiral out of the left leg, into the right leg. Spiral back. Now you may have noticed all of a sudden my hands changed, and there must, there's an expansion and a contraction that kind of went with that. And in your own hands, you may notice that. Okay, that takes us into more of the macro movement. Okay, so I'm going to stay with the toy in hand rather than go to grass grid scale because there's some good pieces here. So you've spiraled into your right and you've turned to square your hip. And within the hip, you're restructuring what's happening in there. But then you have these beautiful hands that are starting to go out and as they get towards their extension, your back starts to open, and as your back opens, your fingers change, and then they come back. So there's a connection that happens between the tailbone and the ends of the fingertips. So, hands start out, tailbone goes back, fingertips change. Sink. And all of a sudden, I can feel in the diaphragm, there's a different movement going on in the diaphragm. Sink back, drop. Out, tailbone starts because you push me with the right foot, comes back, and then let that go out. Okay, so the, my, my stomach was telling me I got inside because I could start to feel it turning and moving in different ways. So let's move to Grasper's tail and see if we can take and keep that macro movement in there while we do this position. We've talked about fingertip into the wrist, if you want to do emotional release, into the palm if you want to do a mental release, and if you want to stay in the field so that you're working with, within the energy around the body, you can do that too. For this particular exercise, I'm going to go to fingertip into my wrist, and that's the action that I'm going to do just for today. Okay. So we're going to sink into the right leg, which is the same as what we were doing. And just before my hand starts to turn, my tailbone starts to move back and my hand turns. So there's a connection right there. Turn in. Now you're almost to the sitting back onto that left leg. And by the time you go to separate the hands, you're in the back leg. Comes back, palm towards palm. Today I'll touch it. And as I go out, my tailbone starts to go back and my hands release. So there's that flat position again. Comes back through. Palms are going to go out. And this one you saw already. Sink back. And this is going to come around. We'll do the whip. So what happens is you get into that left foot, turn your right toe in. Palms turn, fingertips go towards each other, and then you're going to slide right on through, make your cone with your right hand, and toy you to the other side. Sink. Okay, so now what I want you to do is go back to your feet, stand on them, and notice how you feel now. I'm just like solid in my feet. I have changed already how my feet feel on the floor. I can feel more of my toes. I still feel the big ball of my right foot, which tells me I have some blocked energy that doesn't want to go out. And it's not going to let energy in unless I let it go out. So I need to work on that a little more. But I can definitely feel there's a shift and there's a sink down into those feet. Okay, that's how we can take macro to micro. So let's pull something out of low cup again, because there's some great movements in here that we can do the same action. So if we go to mm, last day, we had just worked on the end of part one, turned ourselves around and went into part two. Let's go from there. So you're working on a new set for those people who know this set already. You can expand it. If you've never done it before, you're going to go macro movement first, and then you're going to go micro movement with us. Okay, so.
we would have come around with our right heel out and our right hand out. And this would have been like our foundation, our waist turning foundation. We're going to turn the right foot and I'm going to face my left side wall. I'm going to step to the left back corner and then I'm going to come across and it's a toying pretty much into the left foot. Step with the right foot and it's going to be a toy with the right foot. And then it's going to be step patois, and the right hand is going to push forward with the back of the hand. Step patois, left hand is going to push forward. Step straight, the right hand is going to punch out, left hand goes down to the knee. Let the hand go to wipe the sleeve. Take it up to the brow, and then sink back, and the hands follow each other. I hope you could see that. Okay, I'll try to do it this way if that helps. Okay, so let's do the same thing. I'll go through the macro parts of it. So we just came around, right heel, step onto that right foot, sink, step to the corner, and this is going to go across. Step, this is going to go across. Step paqua, which means your feet are turned out. Back of the hand goes forward. <laughs> Well, I'm going to go under the chandelier. Okay, step straight, and this is going to go out, sink back to the brow, sink back, and the hands follow each other. Okay, I don't know if you can see, but the light's right there. Okay, so um, I'm going a different angle. Okay, so now I'm going to take it down. Uh, hope you can see my platform from this direction be able to see my feet. Okay, I'm going to talk you through the micro. So, coming around on the right foot, rock the tailbone and step into that right foot. So as you go down, your knee relaxes, your elbow relaxes. You're going to step towards your corner and you're going to let the whole body spiral around down into the left leg. Step. This is going to spiral around into your right leg. So down into the right. Step paqua, you'll be turned out. Right hand is going to push back of the hand forward while the left hand comes in. Step paqua, they change place. Step. Step straight with the left foot, goes into a punch. Wipe the sleeve. Goes up to the brow and then comes sinking back down to follow the hands and we'll stop there. Okay, so that's a little bit more detail. Let's go deeper. Sink. Lengthen the spine this time out the top of the head. Step. And now the spine rotation is going to come through the hip. Lower dantian is going to move through. And then step. Same action going back the other way, spiraling down into the right leg. And then feel through the shoulder blade as that comes through. Step patwa. Now this one is going to come through belly, out the arm to the end of the hand. Belly, out the arm, end of the hand. Step straight, point into that left foot. Tailbone drops, belly is coming back, working that sleeve, belly leads you out, pushing out, push back, belly is going to lead you over and sink, push back and back. Okay. All right, that gives you a little bit more. So now let's take it even more. I was working uh, on some of the writings about, we talked about the other day about you're wringing out a cloth. And so that spiral action that comes through the hand or comes through the leg is taking all the tissue, spiraling it around, wringing it out and letting it go, cleaning it, giving some tension to it, massaging it, getting things to move, helping to get the lymph moving, helping to get the fascia engaged, helping to get the electricity running through, 
the circulation opening up. So that would be micro micro movements. So now let's see if we can just focus on that spiral action. So you're sinking on your right leg and that's a spiral clockwise out down into that leg. Sink. Step. And this is going to be a spiral counterclockwise as you come through. Step. This is going to be a clockwise action to get you out of your left foot and a clockwise action to get you down into your right foot. Step. Now you have a direct movement forward into your left leg. Step half wide. This is a direct movement forward into your right leg. It's a different thing than spiraling. Step straight. And this is going to spiral now down into the left leg. Hand goes out in a fist. Spiraling down into your right leg. Pushing, spiraling counterclockwise into the left, spiraling clockwise into the right. Okay, so there's those two movements in the middle, which is step half wa, step half wa, which means turned out. And you're not spiraling, you're actually holding the tissue where it is and you're stretching it. So you're changing it just slightly. Again, micro movements. So let's bring it around again. So we're going to come across, sink. We won't talk so much about the spiral. Sink. There goes your paqua. It's going to come through from the back, out the arm. Step comes through from the back, out the arm. Step. Fist. Sink. Brow, sink, comes through. Okay, let's take it one more step. My hands are starting to feel like uh, they're moving through space. It's like I'm, I'm in therapeutic touch, it would be I'm uh, sweeping it away, is what we would be saying. That's what I felt like. So now what I want you to think about is, as you move your hands, you're displacing the least amount of air. So normally we think if we're going to move through, we would just move through. But now we're going to move through so we don't move the air as we come through. That's a different kind of movement. Okay, let's do it. So you've got sink. Not moving the air. It comes through. With all of that going relaxed. Sink. Push through. Push through. Try not to move any of the air. the difference on that one. So we've gone from a macro movement, which is where you would start learning Tai Chi, and we've gone to a micro movement where we can take it and put it into intricate pieces. So that was displacing the least amount of air on the outside. Let's go to the inside. Let's say you were sitting too long in the car, at the desk, <laughs> or whatever you happen to be doing. And let's say circulation through the hips wasn't so good. Let's say maybe circulation's not so good on, on the legs to the feet. So what I want you to put into your mind this time is letting the blood vessels, all the capillaries, everything that blood flows with, letting that completely wash out. It's going to come up into the core system where it gets to uh, transform and then to be able to deliver fresh new blood. Okay, so let's take that. So this time we're focused on a circulatory system. I'm not going to say anything, just walk you through it. Step 
straight. Okay, so now what I want you to think about is oxygen. This time, now the blood's flowing, you want to fill it up with oxygen. Oxygenate the whole system. Ready? Here we go. Very subtle, the difference, but immediately I was like, oh, air, big breath in. When I was thinking blood, I was focused, and then all of a sudden I was like, oh, fill it up with air. And see how you can control all those little pieces. All right, last part. This one, we're going for highest energy flow, all right? So everything that your body needs. Here goes. I hope you notice the difference. Okay, so let's uh, leave that micro movement piece and uh, let's play a little bit with Saber because uh, we don't normally get to do that. Okay, just check in two. Okay, so quarter two. All right, let's play with Saber a little bit. And typically this would be macro movements. I'm just going to do seated for anybody that needs that. If you want to stay standing, you're welcome to do that. And I will go to standing, but I just wanted to do this in case anybody needed it. Okay, so let's go to the place where the saber makes the figure eight patterns. And we do two sets of them. Okay, so let's do up to there. And then we have all the way around and out without bonking yourself on the head. <laughs> so I'm going to turn in case the angle helps anybody. You probably want to change the saber. It might not work so well. I'll turn a little bit this way. Okay. So, saber is down. And again, we're going back to macro. Here's structure. So, we've got around to the right, up to center, around to the left, up to center, around to the right, up to center, around to the left. Up to center, all the way around the head, and straight. Okay, so if anybody needed me facing that way for how to do the same around, hopefully that helped. Okay, so let's move it from macro to micro. All right, so here we are. Fingers are turned so that your fingernails are touching into the bottom of the forearm. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to push into my left foot just a little bit. And that spirals me to the right. Push into my right foot and up in the center. Lengthen the spine. Keep in the right foot. Push into the left. And that creates a synergy between the two movements. Over to the left. Or sorry, pushing with the left. Push with the right. Brings you back up to the middle. Keep pushing in the right. Push into the left. And it brings you back. Okay. If you remember our topic for the month of April, way back before we went into isolation, it was expansion, pause, contraction, pause. And it's beautiful in this movement. So we have the place where we're expanding the energy, that moment where it just sits, and then it's a contraction, and then it sits. That's what we're finding here. So we have push into the left. Okay. The right lift. There's your pause. So you can left, comes back. Okay, let's keep going. Around to the right, push into the right, 
There's your pause. Over to the left, pushing the left, comes back. All the way around is into the left foot, into the right foot, and then straight down into both feet. And then, okay, let's try it again. So we have pushing to the left and up. Pushing to the right and up. Into the left, up. Pushing to the right, up. All the way around. And see. Now, if you're new to Sabre, <laughs> then that one, you know, you're thinking, I got to get that Sabre to go. When you really get into the power of Sabre, the Sabre disappears. It's not even there. And you're moving so much through your body. The dance, everybody else sees. But we don't actually experience that inside because we're so connected to our body, the Sabre disappears. Okay, so I'm going to just put this out. Hello, Hunter. Hey, okay. I'm going to come this way. Yeah, everybody must be missing you, okay? Look at, there's your stool. Go ahead, jump up. You're going to go. <laughs> I was wondering when you were going to come back down. Beautiful. Okay, so here it goes. Uh, I'm going to get the shorter saber. Like a wall and a chandelier. Okay, here it goes. So it's up, sink, rock the tailbone, get half lock. Up, there's a pause. Sink, open the spine, half lock up. Sink, open the spine, half lock up. Sink, open the spine, half lock up. And then this is going to go all the way around. And then you step straight forward and you come out. So if you're on here and you've never done saber, a wooden spoon from the kitchen is fantastic. <laughs> you can use that. This movement is great because it has the figure eight pattern in it. And as we talked about at the beginning of this episode, we talked about the uh, space between the joints that we're getting when we do the micro movements. This happens through that figure eight there's a communication that comes through the figure eight that's really important. And that's really important for brain and brain function. So this is a beautiful move for that. So let's explore it a little bit deeper. You could, uh, for those who have been here the whole time, you could take a deep breath in. You could work on circulation. You could just work on relaxing. Whatever you want to, you take it to where you want it to be. And I'm just going to tell you where you're moving. Sink down into the right, and your hips go. Hakwa, rise. Lift right up through the top of the head, sink the tailbone. Hakwa, up, sink the tailbone. Hakwa, up, sink the tailbone. Hakwa, up. And now you're going to drop the tailbone. Fingertip moves around, so now the fingertips are touching. This goes up. You're going to lift the whole spine, sink to drop the tailbone, step with the foot, and the saber will fall out. Okay. Let's try it one more time. We'll try not to get quite so close. So we have up, sink and drop the tailbone. Spiral up, sink and drop the tailbone. Sink and drop the tailbone, spiral up, sink and drop the tailbone, spiral up through the top of the head, all the way around, drop the tailbone. So you're still finishing the saber off, you've already dropped the tailbone, and you're into the drop. Okay, perfect. Okay, I hope I help to illustrate for those who are new to Tai Chi, how the layers come on and how you can really play with the movement. So you don't have to remember the whole set. It's delightful to just do the set and be in moving meditation. Absolutely fabulous. But if you don't have that, you can find relaxation. You can find significant release. You can calm the emotions just by focusing on a little movement and just playing with them. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to try it. 
Uh, also setting the intention, circulation, feeling the bone marrow, moving the lymph. Just set your mind to what you want to do and see what happens to the movement. Let it go. If you come back to uh, your feet where we started today, and just put the weight back into both feet. And I'm so happy because that big toe is no longer pushing hard on the right side into the floor. It's completely evened out. My back is open, my hips are nice and released. Everything feels really good. Okay. Oop, sorry, Hunter. So the last part is people ask me, how do I have enough energy to do all the things that I do every day? And I don't always have to sleep long periods of time either. And it is because I do Tai Chi every day. And thank you for you to all be here every day. Because the more Tai Chi I'm doing, the less sleep that I need, the more energy that I have. I'm really able to focus on getting things done that I want to and targeting my, my goals. So if you haven't put that kind of effort into making the wellness tools work for you, maybe today's the day to shift your thoughts on that. How can you provide yourself with what it needs to be able to boost the system and sustain it there? So with that, happy Tuesday. Thank you for being here. And Jackie, I see you're here from just across the way. I'm happy to have you. And uh, for all of you that I can't see, <laughs> I'm glad you came. All right, be well. <laughs>